But I do some very well. Okay. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, hello everyone. Thank you for coming this evening. Um, it's really, uh, yeah, a wave. Um, it's really good to see so many of you come. Um, normally we get a, a lower turnout even for the full capacity. So it's, oh, let me turn the vol. Or shall I speak up? Yeah. Turn the volume up. Okay, I'll turn the volume up and I'll speak up. Um, one second. Okay, does this make any more noise back there? I don't think it really does. Okay. Okay, I'll just talk loudly as well. Um, so, thanks for coming. Um, before we get started, there's a few people here that Mark wants to introduce you to from our um, festival production team. So we'll start there, and then we'll talk about health and safety. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, just before we start, I just want to introduce a few members of the team that you will see a lot over the weekend and who will be your points of contact as well as the volunteer coordinators. Um, so we'll start at the back. Um, you can see Matthew in the yellow. Um, he is helping to manage all facilities um, within Ravensbourne. So that's like furniture moves, making sure there's water everywhere. And if you need a table or chairs or anything like that, he's your man to go to. Um, Stephanie is there. She is wrangling all our travel at the moment and then will be helping and assisting on site with the science fair and the demo party on the Sunday. Um, so yeah, she is... a Great pro contact to go to. She'll know the festival inside out by the weekend. Um, Joe is there. Um, Joe is our supplies master for the weekend. So she will have every single supply that any facilitator will need, or could, you could imagine. She'll have it in her supply room. Um, so some of you will be working around the festival just helping out the facilitators, and they might be requesting supplies. She is the woman to go to. Um, and then finally, we have Consuela, who is the production manager for MOSFEST. Um, she'll be there making sure that everyone's staying safe over the weekend and just supporting the entire festival as a whole. So, yeah, she's a great point of contact to go to as well. Just if you need any advice or want to know what's going on, she'll be able to answer those questions. Um, and then myself, I'm Mark. I am the senior production coordinator. And my main role is looking after the D&D stage and also the main talk on level four, the main space. Cool. Um, I guess health and safety is a little bit. <laughs> so welcome to Mozilla London. This is our London office. Um, these a few bits just so you know in terms of if there's a fire alarm, you'll hear the alarm go off. If you do, there is an emergency exit, which is where you just came in. So if you go out, go down the stairs to your left, follow them all the way down, and the exit is to your left. I just follow it outside. And our muscle point is just around the corner by Itsu. Um, the toilets upstairs are the women's on the right hand side. If you follow one floor down, it is the men's. Um, also, we are filming tonight, um, so if you'd rather not be on camera, if you want to sit behind the white doors, you won't be seen on camera. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for coming tonight. It's great to see uh, such a great turnout. Like, we're really excited you're all here, and we can't wait to work with you all, so thank you. Okay, I'll take back over. Um, before we get started a bit more, um, we're Mozilla. Um, you probably know us by now in some sense, but there's a little statement about us there. And I really wanted to introduce you to our participation guidelines. If you've been to any of the meetups so far, you'll know about the participation guidelines. Um, you can read the full text at this link, but it can all be summarized as be respectful. Um, you're all here together as a community, as a group of people that are going to be with us through the festival. And both today through the festival and outside of the, the festival, but within this space, um, I'd ask that you generally be respectful and take a look at these participation guidelines if you get a chance. I'm afraid that a lot of this presentation is going to be deaf by PowerPoint. If it gets really deaf by PowerPoint, you just shout and we can have a conversation about something. But um, before we get to the, the, the deaf by PowerPoint part, um, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Tom. Um, I'm one of the volunteer coordinators for this year. Um, it's my second year doing this, so um, it, I, I should be better at it than last year. <laughs> um, Ziggy and Robbie aren't with us today. They both live abroad. Ziggy <laughs> lives in Belgium, um, and Robbie is based in Dallas, Texas. 
Um, so you'll meet those guys next week um, at the festival itself. They'll both be here from Thursday, so you'll get to meet them nice and early on. So before we talk about the volunteer program, I want to talk a little, about, a little bit about Ravensbourne College. Um, before we do that, um, I just want to see how many of you have been to a Mozilla Festival before? Okay, so the vast majority of you have been to Ravensbourne before. Um, but as a little bit of a reminder, Ravensbourne is nine floors. Um, it's a digital media and design university, which gives it a really nice open space. It's a really perfect venue for us. And um, I was going to introduce you to Team Ravensbourne, but we didn't invite them. So they're, <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> they're not here. Um, so we'll ignore that bullet point on the, on the slide. <laughs> Um, Ravensbourne is located just opposite the O2 Arena on Greenwich Peninsula. Um, so if you see there, that's North Greenwich Tube Station, and you probably all know it's a very short walk around past the O2 Arena, and you come into the doors of Ravensbourne College, and it is the building with the holes in it. Cheese. The cheese building. The cheese building, okay. In terms of some safety things about Ravensbourne, um, in, for the escalation of fires and general emergencies on the venue, um, Ravensbourne will be our escalation point for that at the top. Um, so they'll manage most of that and be our coordinators for it. Um, and in the case of a fire, especially, that's something to note, is that you're not fire marshals. Um, please don't try and marshal people out of the building. Just evacuate. If you hear a fire alarm, there's no drill scheduled over the weekend. What we're asking you to do is follow the nearest exit and leave the building. There'll be fire marshals there to help guide you, um, and they'll be supplied by Ravensbourne as, stu as students that are trained. In terms of first aid, um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we would ask that you assess the situation, um, and we'll have a communication pathway on what to do there, which we'll, is there, but we'll, we'll talk about it later. At Ravensbourne, we've got a couple of rooms that you need to know about as volunteers that you otherwise probably wouldn't really know about. Um, room 108, if you've been a volunteer before, you'll know room 108. It's a, uh, it's a boardroom style room, this one here, and it's on the first floor. Um, you're welcome to leave your bags there, come and sit down for a drink and a break in your, in your shifts. Um, you can have friendly chats with other volunteers. It's a nice secure room, so you're welcome to leave stuff there. If one of us aren't there, the room will be locked. It's uh, not really for prolonged stays, it's a fairly small room, so it, it, it really is just to sit down, set your stuff and head back off, maybe sit down for a drink and a, a small chat. Right next to it we've got room 107, so that's going to be the production office, and it's also going to be our supplies and storage room, which uh, Joe, I can't see Joe, um, there's Joe, which Joe will be looking after this year. Um, if you need them, um, supplies will be available there. So we'll talk about how the info gurus will obtain supplies a little bit later. It will also be the point for radio check-in and check-out um, for those of you that will be issued radios. And it's right next to room 108, so you'll see it as soon as you come to check-in as a volunteer. <coughs> okay, some pieces about Mozilla Festival and accessibility from Mark, I think. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So um, we try to make the festival as open and as accessible as we can to everyone. Um, we implement various things just to make sure that um, we can cater to every possible audience that are coming. A few things we're doing this year um, for the main D&D um, room as well as the main stage we have an induction loop so people with hearing aids are able to listen in. Um, have, um, we have that in place. Um, we, sorry. Jargon bomb, D&D. D&D. D&D is Dialogues and Debates, so that's um, our main speaker series which takes place downstairs on Level Zero. So we've got some incredible speakers such as um, Tim Berners-Lee is one, um, another is our very own Mitchell Baker who signed Mozilla um, many years ago. Yeah, so it's an incredible lineup. Um, we also have fully accessible toilets um, that are available. We have lifts that go to every floor in the building. There is... Um, Sorry, I'm trying to think of it off the top of my head. Um, language stickers, yeah. So other ways we try to keep the festival as diverse as possible is that we have language stickers available to dictate, to show to everyone what languages you speak. We also have pronoun stickers available. So immediately you can look at someone's lanyard and see how you should address them. Um, 
and yeah, I think that's majority. Yeah, that is the majority that we have. Um, but if there is anyone with any sort of accessibility needs, they make themselves available or known to us at the registration desk. Um, we will have a registration pack available to anyone who is working on that desk, and it has all the detailed information of different ways that we can support them across the festival. It's a really detailed guide, so we'll also send that out to you to be able to read. And yes, that's a question. Well, we have language speakers as well, in case um, attendees want to talk with us in our language. Yeah, so we have just um, the main languages that we have supported as a festival, so anything that includes French, German, Hindi, um, and we also have just black ones that you can fill in your own as well. But yeah, brilliant, thank you. Cool. Thank you, Mark. Okay, so if you've been to any of my meetups, including the last one or any of the meetups last year, you'll know this slide. Um, so just some key expectations about Mozilla Festival. We ask you for four hours of volunteering through the entire festival, so that includes MozFest House. Um, so if you've got a MozFest House shift booked, you, we will try not to ask you to come and do more um, over the weekend. That will entitle you to unrestricted access to the whole festival, excluding Mozilla Festival House. You'll be able to use the co-working space there, but the events are separately ticketed. But over the weekend, you'll, so that's Friday to Sunday, you'll have full access to everything. We'll provide you meals throughout the festival, as we do with all of our attendees. But in your case, we will also, while you're on shift, in, even if there's no attendee meals scheduled, you will never go hungry at Mozilla Festival. Hopefully. If you do go hungry, tell me. Um, it's a nice, friendly volunteer community. You're all here today. I'd encourage you to stick around for a little while afterwards and have a chat with each other. Um, and over the weekend, I'm sure you'll all get to know each other through the, the shifts that you'll be set up to do. Um, we're not going to sp speak much about Mozilla Festival House today, simply because I'm going to do a little bit of a separate briefing on the, on the house. Um, it's it's a fairly different venue, but a bit of information about it. It's um, an extension of Mozilla Festival. It's for events that perhaps don't fit into the festival schedule or they don't fit into the space, but they are linked in the same areas that we're working towards. So we've provided a, a, a nice space for those, and it's a, it's a congregation of different events that perhaps couldn't work on their own. It's going to be a fairly small volunteer team. There are a lot of you that have signed up and said that you're available during the week, and um, we will just be accepting a few of those, um, just because we, we only need about five to six volunteers over the course of the, over the, course of the week. OK, so we'll talk a little bit about the roles that you'll be doing. The first one that we'll talk about is the AV tech role. Um, oh, we've got an echo. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Dan. Now, Dan is still pointed at on this slide, um, but I'll let Dan, where is Dan? <laughs> <laughs> okay, when Dan's back, we'll talk about Dan. Um, we'll, we'll start with the InfoGuru role then. So the InfoGuru role is perhaps one that um, ma the majority of volunteers will sign up to. It's a role that we would encourage a lot of volunteers to sign up to because you do get a, a good depth and experience over the festival. You get to do um, quite a few different things as an InfoGuru. Um, essentially, in pairs, you'll be looking after one of our information desks, so we've got those on um, every major floor of the festival. You'll be providing assistance to all of the attendees, the session leaders, and the space wranglers for the festival. So it's pretty much anything that they can throw at you. You'll be you'll be uh, their first point of contact. You'll be a, you'll be acting as a host for the festival. You'll be getting support from the Mozilla Help Team, so Moz Help. Um, that's going to be a fairly specialist team of volunteers that Fuzzy's going to lead, and we'll talk about those in a little while. You'll also be, some of you will also be operating the emergent session spaces. Um, now, you won't, that's not a particular sign up, it's just something that we'll invite some of you to do. And that is a space for conversations that go beyond the pre planned schedule um, so that we can have ad hoc conversations created. <laughs> You'll probably want to get your head around guidebook, so a lot of the questions will be about guidebook. You'll also be passing on messages to MozHelp for schedule changes or asking for further information for your attendees that give you questions. 
We'll also be asking that um, at any time wranglers might need resources, facilitators might need resources, and they might come to you and ask for those. And because it's two of you, one of you we'd ask goes down to the production office and grabs the supplies that are needed. We'd be asking that when there are two of you and you've got a bit of a quiet patch, you have a little walk around the space, offer assistance, and also be proactive. If you see things that might be helpful, um, ask, see, see whether you can help. Um, it's always good to notice things and solve them before they become problems, otherwise they build up and become one big problem. <laughs> Um, and also, as an info guru, we're also asking you to be our eyes and ears for disruptive behavior and to escalate it appropriately. We'll talk about that escalation a bit later, um, but I just want to note that this role is perhaps the one where you'll get the most exposure to issues and you'll have the first opportunity to help us handle them. We'll go back a couple of steps to the AV tech role and Dan. Hmm? Hello. Oh. I've been handed a cube. Does this work? <laughs> this is awesome. Do I get to use this through the weekend? No. To yell at people. Um, what would you like me to say, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> Dan, if you can tell us a little bit about what your volunteer is going to do, the setup process, and what you'll do over the weekend, and then how we'll do tear down this year. Okay. Um, Friday is building everything which is mostly putting together the screens. They come in boxes. Um, we try and keep a bit of an audit trail on them because we don't want it to turn into like the London riots and have everyone walking out the venue with them. Um, but uh, then through the weekend, it's just allocating them to certain spaces. There's things like the science fair. Is the science fair happening again? It is, cool. So yeah, putting them out for the science fair. Um, moving them between floors and then on Sunday uh, packing everything away again. So really the Friday and the Sunday are the two busy spots through the rest of the weekend. If anyone's got any experience in AV or in IT, it's all relevant because you're basically there as frontline support for everything from it's not working or have you tried plugging it in um, <laughs> to I can't make the source work or press the source button to I don't have an adapter I left by in the hotel or at home or something, um, in which case you wish them the best and <laughs> move on. Um, but no, um, I think the rest of it is about just sort of doing what the guidelines say, participate and uh, try and be there to catch issues as they arise. Um, just be friendly and helpful like everybody else is. So. Thank you, Dan. Can you throw me my catch box back? Bring it or throw it. You can throw, throw it. Throw it. Can it's, I throw it? Yeah, it's a catch box. If I, if I hit anyone, I apologize in advance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. OK. Um, next little role to talk about is the mascot team. Um, <laughs> you can throw it without it being turned off. I'll leave it in here without it echoing. Oh, OK. So, mascot team, we're. We have a fox in a, well, a fox costume. Hello. It's the same costume as last year. It is. Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> There's an air conditioning now. The person from last year doesn't, absolutely does not want to have that task again. Yeah. <laughs> really that warm last year as well. <laughs> so. <laughs> it has been dry clean since last year. <laughs> How much of that was a lie? <laughs> I don't know. Mark told me it, so it must be true. Currently being dry cleaned. Apparently. Which means Mark's going to send it for dry cleaning tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really, wink, wink. <laughs> Um, so with the fox costume, it's a position for um, people with good hearts that aren't going to fail in warm. Um, <laughs> but really, it's 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 a good, it's a fun role. Um, there's it does get warm. Um, we provide ice packs and we try and keep it cool, and we'll look after you and we'll provide nice cold water. Um, it, it's a, you know it's a fox. Um, <laughs> There's also one or two volunteers on the team to guide the fox. Now, the two volunteers guiding the fox have a few responsibilities. Um, so the fox itself, you'll receive on the day training um, about how to 
posh to yourself because anybody that's done the fox before will know that you start off either you know like this or like this so you have to get a bit of training on how to position your head to not look like that um, and also the movement and the posture and the rules um, the rules are pretty much don't speak and the costume can get very warm, uh, warm as we said so the support team that we send out with it um, will ask you you know keep an eye on the fox make sure they're okay check the temperature on the back of the neck and look after them um, we'll give you a bit more information on how to look after them on the day we'll also ask that if you get the opportunity and people want photos taken you take their phones and take photos and um, it's, a, it's a nice little thing to do um, and also guide the fox the, go the fox can't really see so <laughs> it's always best to try and point it in somewhere near a good direction people generally move for the fox but if you can point it in the right direction that's good avoid and avoid stairs <laughs> yeah um, aside from the fox team we've got our welcome team welcome team you're going to be the most focused um, on people throughout the weekend so you'll be uh, the first people people encounter when they come to the festival so it's going to be particularly by busy on Friday afternoon when our science party starts and then really busy Saturday morning when the rest of the festival starts <coughs> you'll be supporting the welcome desk checking attendees in um, handing them a swag bag which we'll talk about in a little while and you'll be their first guidance to exploring the festival early on Saturday morning we might be offering tours to certain people that come along so <coughs> that's something to mention if you want to uh, help us out with that you'll also be again similar to the info guru eyes and ears for disruptive behavior you're essentially going to also be an info desk because people will come to you with questions and um, to tell you about things so if things do get reported or you notice things please do pass it on and we'll talk about that later we'll give you a bit of a briefing on the day and um, all of these roles will come with a bit of a training pack as well so we've got some documents that explain how each role works and we'll send those out as soon as you're registered for your shifts the other thing that you'll be looking after is checking for under 16 and as you can see it's a fairly involved process you'll have a piece of paper explaining all of this on the desk and we'll send you the pre-reading on how it works um, but essentially under 16 is a welcome at the festival with somebody and um, so it has to be an adult that's uh, a responsible adult that's looking after them and the specific rules around how they do photography and um, the, the lanyards that we give them and the consent forms that we take essentially the thing to note is that if, a, if an under 16 is there with an adult we need to make sure we've got their consent form and that we have contact details for the adult that's with them um, but this is all detailed on the document that you'll get as well okay most help most help are experts of everything happening everywhere um, <laughs> sometimes um, it leads it um, and they're also our social media warriors so they'll be looking out for the hashtag Moz help so any questions that come through over social media um, I'm going to get fuzzy to tell you a little bit about the things that he can um, his team will be able to support you with it's a fairly small team that we've pretty much put together by now um, if you are interested in doing it and being on the, the back end side of this and helping run it then please do let us know but the most important thing for the majority of volunteers to know is what must help can help you with. Fuzzy? All right. Um, so we pretty much act as a central help desk. So on the fourth floor, there's a larger help desk than on any of the other floors, with the exception of the registration desk. Uh, and this deals with everything from the same kinds of requests that a uh, AV have to the welcome desk to everything else. Um, and routing any questions that need to be routed to someone else. So an AV question we route through to AV team, uh, uh, welcome desk question, if somehow they manage to make it all the way up to, to the fourth floor without seeing the welcome desk, we'll handle those as well. Um, we let people know that Lost and Found is with Ravensbourne. Um, we make sure people know how to get around the venue if needed. We follow the hashtag as mentioned and we mention, monitor that for both uh, anything you guys want to send us as well as anything that's ha happening across the festival so one of the things we encourage participants to do is if they have an issue just tweet it out if they're not sure where someone is or it's not urgent or anything like that and we deal with the routing of those kinds of queries too we also take care of making sure that the schedule is updated as the event goes on so if you've not been to MozFest before um, 
it's a very dynamic event, so the schedule changes periodically throughout the event. Uh, the main things stay the same, but there's emergent sessions, which Tom skimmed briefly over with the info gurus. We make sure that all ends up in this uh, festival schedule uh, that everyone else has access to as well. So if you have any scheduling needs, any questions or queries that you don't know how to answer, um, or you just need somewhere to kind of direct people so that they can, if you're it, from time to time, it's rare, but you might have like eight requests coming in at once. If you're near the fourth floor at all, you can send people to us and we can route those questions too. Um, as mentioned, we're supposedly experts of everything, but we're not. Um, but we, everyone that's working on the Moz Help team um, will either have done MozFest for at least two years probably. Um, that's not a requirement to help out. There will always be one person who does have at least two years of most, help, most best experience there, though. So that means that if you have any queries and you want to join for the first time and see what it's all about, or you, you're good at social media, just let me know, um, and we can make that happen. Thank you, Fuzzy. OK, so catering. Um, we have food through the weekend. Um, and we will be looking for a few volunteers to help us out with catering. Um, it's not going to be as massively hands-on as last year. Last year was quite a um, high-pressure, stressful move around of things. Um, this year, we're using a different catering company, and things are going to be a little bit operationally smoother. Um, but essentially, your role is going to be to support the caterers in distributing their food um, and ensuring everything runs smoothly. So that might mean making sure that only our volunteers, our, our attendees are getting the food, so checking people have got a lanyard when they come through, or just helping the queues move along and uh, you know, keeping people um, fed. And the food is going to be served in a number of locations, and we'll need a bit of help getting it from one place to the other at times. OK, so I want to talk a bit about communications. Um, essentially, We'll come on to that in a second. We've got a couple of primary channels of communication. Um, first one is radio, which is where we'll start, and the second one is Slack. Um, in terms of radio, this is who has a radio. So the radio is nicely distributed across our volunteer team. All of the production team will have radios as well, and various other people across the, the venue will have radios. Myself, Ziggy, and Robbie will always be on available by, by radio. Fuzzy's also also going to be available by radio all of the time. The other person that's also always going to be available by radio, other than AV Dan, is um, Paul. So Paul is a Moswest veteran, um, and this is a good opportunity to introduce Paul. Um, Paul, can you wave? <laughs> so Paul's hiding over there in the corner. Um, Paul's a MOSFET veteran, and he's always wandering around looking for ways to help out. Um, so if he needs help, he'll make a call for the, vol the volunteers to help him. And equally, if you need a hand at any time, feel free to <laughs> call MOS help, and Paul will possibly come and give you a hand. So he's going to be running around looking after things. Um, all of the info desks, so if you're taking a role as an info guru, all of the info desks will have a radio. What that means is that other volunteers might come to you with messages that need to be passed on. It means that you'll be the eyes and ears for the festival, so you'll be listening on the radio for information that might be relevant to your floor. And equally, you'll be passing messages on from people on your floor and information about your floor onto the rest of the volunteer team and on, onto the uh, production team. And we'll talk a little bit about that escalation in a second. We've got a number of radio channels. Um, essentially, We've got a couple of pathways where you'll need to switch to either production channel or first aid channel, um, and in some case, very rare cases, there's the, the emergency channel. But for the vast majority, cross never. fingers crossed never, for the vast majority of the time, you'll be on channel four, which is our volunteer channel. Um, that will be preset when you get the radio, so you'll all be set up and you'll be listening to volunteers and talking to the rest of us. Um, in terms of radio use, I know for some of us, it's the first time that we pick up a radio and the first time that we, we talk on a radio. And it can be hard to get the confidence for a starting point to speak on the radio concisely and clearly. But there's some important things to remember. Um, the radio, we're asking you to be nice and concise, but not rushed. Um, so think about what you want to say and try and get it across. And when you're speaking, just make sure that you clearly identify who you want to talk to and who you are. 
if people don't know who you are, they probably can't help you. Um, so just say, you know, I'm, this is Tom for Fuzzy and I need this help. And if you make it that clear, um, people will always know what you're looking for. And always look for a gap in the conversation. So it's, unless it's really urgent, please don't um, interrupt other conversations to speak on the radio. Then otherwise, I would just say with the radio, go ahead and try it. Um, a lot of the time, some people will um, shy away from the radio because they're not sure on um, putting themselves in there. But give it a go, because the more we communicate, the better and more efficient we can be. We'll also have access to Slack over the weekend. Um, there's a hash volunteer channel. You should all have an email about Slack. If you don't have an email about Slack, let me know. Um, but it's going to have the whole festival team on Slack. Um, in the volunteer channel, we'll have all of you guys. And all of the info desks will have Slack on the computer. Um, last year, that didn't quite happen. But we'll make sure that happens on time this year. It's a really good way of doing basic communication. So if you need to ask a question, but it's not urgent, so you need a question about your shifts, or you want to change something, just give us a shout on Slack, because we can pick it up as and when. <laughs> Um, besides the info desks having it, again, you've had an invite, so if you want to, please do go ahead and sign up and join us, and we'll, uh, we'll say hello and we'll be nice to you. Okay, this is perhaps one of the most important pieces of today, um, escalations. So we've got a bit of a chain of communication for the best of all. Um, the bit in the orange is the bit we care about as volunteers. Um, your main escalation point for everything across the festival is us. Um, so we're your volunteer coordination team. If you're doing some work with Fuzzy or Dan um, for questions about the shift you're on there, you're, they're the best people to go to. But otherwise, if you get in touch with myself, Robbie or Ziggy, we'll always be able to help you. Earlier we mentioned the idea of identifying and passing on disruptive, disru disruptive behaviours. What we mean by disruptive behaviours is anything that's causing disruption. Um, and that could be unacceptable behaviours, so violence, personal attacks, derogatory language, unwelcome sexual attention or physical contact, disruptive behaviour, or anything that's influencing other unacceptable behaviour. And you might get reports of that, and you might notice it yourself. In those cases, what I'm asking you to do is identify the behaviours and make notes. Um, that's the important thing. Take a neutral position. Please don't try and get involved in any conflict or anything like that. Take a very neutral position and make notes so that we know what's going on. And then, when it's appropriate, make a radio call to us as your co coordinators and we'll come down to you and we'll take your notes and we'll pass them on to the production team. It's really important that we get all this information because what might seem like a single small occurrence, for example, could actually be a recurring problem across the festival. For some people, that might mean that they're stressed and we need to go and help them. For other people, that might mean, be, mean that they're uh, not really acting appropriately for the festival. We need to talk about how, that, how we approach that. Another important thing to know about is lost children. Um, the festival is open for everybody, including young people. We've got a youth zone on the second floor. And so what we're asking you to do is we're not asking you to guide the children back. We're asking you to identify lost children or if they identify themselves to you and try and guide them back to an info desk. Um, you can't force them to move anywhere. You can't do anything along those lines. So just please say, you know, we'd like to come back to the info desk and we'll find your parents. And um, if you can get them back to an info desk, that's great. Immediately once you're at the, at the info desk, switch over to channel one, which is production, and ask to speak to Emrys Green. Um, so if you just make a radio call and tell Emrys that you've got a lost child and what your location is, they'll then, um, Emrys will then come down to your location and they'll help you out. When it's convenient, do make a radio call back on channel four to the coordinator team so that we can come, at, come down and give you a hand as well and make sure that everything's run smoothly. If it's the opposite way around, so for example, a parent comes to you and says that they've lost their child, it's the exact opposite approach, so, or exactly the same approach, really. So just radio Emirates and tell them um, that a parent's worried that they've lost their child and Emirates will um, give you some guidance and help you out. Um, I think that covers most of the escalations we need to talk about. Um, one other little escalation is within our volunteer community. If there's behaviours within our volunteer community that you're not happy with, um, then 
please do come and find one of us on your coordinator team. The production team are also always available to you, so that's um, you know Sarah, Mark, and all of the guys that we've just introduced. But we are your first escalation point, so if there's anything that you ever want to talk about, please do come and find one of us. In terms of logistics, um, I haven't sent you much information on this as of yet. We've got a, the schedule has been released. I think I sent you all an email yesterday with the schedule. Um, that's got the session times, the important information about the festival, and it's all hosted for a platform co called Guidebook. It's good to familiarize yourself with it. People will ask questions about Guidebook over the weekend, and you'll also be the master of it to use it as well. We're doing an adjustment, apparently. <laughs> Changes to Guidebook can be made by the Moz Help team. So if you need anything changed on the schedule, just give Moz Help a shout, and they'll give you a hand. <coughs> OK, and in terms of shifting, if you tell us what days are available, um, we'll then block out, you'll then block out the times for sessions that you want to attend, and we'll assign shifts to you for the available time. So. That starts with the, um, the emails, sorry, the, the registration for your TITO tickets. When you registered for TITO, you told us some basic information about the days you're available. And then we'll move on towards the, um, the, the times that you want to block out. Um, Fuzzy might have, us, have something to show us in just a second, um, which is how we'll do that. And then we'll assign you some shift in the leftover time. So that can be based on the schedule. So you can look at the schedule, decide what you want to go to, and then in your available time, we'll schedule you some shifts. When you arrive at MozFest next week, um, if you're arriving on Friday onwards, what you'll do is you'll come in and the welcome desk will be open from Friday. When you arrive, just tell the welcome desk you're a volunteer, and as soon as you're checked in and you've got your lanyard and your swag bag, if you come upstairs one floor and come to room 108, as you go up the stairs, it's just turn right at the top of the stairs on the first floor, and you'll come straight into room 108. If you're arriving on Thursday, um, we will send you a specific email um, if you're scheduled for any shifts on Thursday. What we'll ask you that you do is you check in with Ravensbourne Security. The welcome desk won't be open on Thursday. So just let them know that you're a Mozilla volunteer and require a visitor badge. They'll have your name on a list ready for you, and you'll be able to check in directly with them. Of course, for anybody coming along to the RSA, we've got completely separate instructions, um, and we'll send those out in the briefing that we do for the um, MozFest House. Also, just a quick other logistical note that's especially relevant to you if you're going to be on the welcome team. People with yellow lanyards, they're specifically asking for no photos. Um, and if you see people taking photos of people wearing lanyards, what I'd suggest you do is you can either choose to approach them and say, hey, look, just so you know, yellow lanyards mean they're looking to not have photos taken. And if it becomes a repeat, repetitive problem or there's any conflict or problems with that, just report it to one of us and we'll make sure it gets taken care of. And equally, I'd ask that none of you take photos of people wearing yellow lanyards. And if you do come across any photos that you've accidentally taken, just don't publish them. OK, I think that summarizes everything we need to know about the festival. And um, we've got a bit of a, I just want to quickly show you something as well. Uh, you know what? My laptop's off. OK, I won't I'll show you. Mine in. It'll be easier. Yeah, sure. Wait, do you have an adapter for yours, Fuzzy? Actually, why? I don't need one. OK. So what we've actually got this year is we've got a uh, volunteer management system. If you have volunteered with us in previous years, you'll recognize the word angle system. Um, and <laughs> that's the angle system, um, that reaction. Um, so we're, we're replacing that with our own in-house volunteer management system this year. Um, we've basically got the piece now where you'll be able to block out time, and then we'll assign shifts based on the, the times that you've blocked out. Um, Fuzzy will give us a quick show of that now when he's plugged in. Sing a song while I sing. <laughs> Nate, do you want to sing a song? Uh, <laughs> hurry up. Hurry up. It's a good song. <laughs> hurry up. Um, <laughs> getting rid of this picture. Yeah. And he's getting rid of all this naughty picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he wants in life. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so this is Flying Unicorn. <laughs> Flying Unicorn is the new volu volunteer management system. Busy. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the written model of how registration will work. Uh, you'll get an email about that um, at the end of this week. Um, it, it's very simple. It's just going to ask for a name and an email, and that's it. Um, once you log in, you will be presented with a screen very similar to this one. Uh, this one is specifically around how you block out, uh, focused on how you aren't, block out times that you aren't available, and it's times that you're not available. Just want to make sure that one's clear. I'm going to put a big strip across the top just so it doesn't get confused. Uh, we will not be shifting anyone against any times that they say they're not free. Uh, when you registered, you were asked days that you were available. Any days that don't that, uh, fall outside of that will automatically be blocked out like Monday here is for me. Um, and then any shifts that do uh, have been assigned to you will show up in green. Um, Blocking out time is going to be really, really simple. All you're going to have to do, if I can duck out the way, is pick a time that you're not available. Obviously, 5.30 is a bit early, uh, and we aren't likely to be scheduling anyone at 5.30, so don't worry about really early in the morning. Um, pick a time, uh, and then optionally provide a reason. So uh, that's just in case you want to kind of make sure that crystal clear, like, I might overrun a little bit on this. I'm not going to be available because of trains or whatever. It's just handy, helpful notes for the coordination team uh, to set things up so they know what's going on. Uh, but like I said, that's completely optional, so I'm just going to skip that one. And it's just going to block that straight out for you. Uh, removing, there'll be a remove button. Click on the one that you want to remove, and then click remove. Uh, I broke it just before we started, so <laughs> that doesn't exist at the moment. Um, but this will all go live at the end of this week, and you'll be invited to sign up and fill in the times that you're not available. Um, and then once we get towards the main festival, shifts will start appearing as the coordination team start filling everything in. Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm being told by Tom. He's going to start filling that all in on Wednesday. Wednesday, will be, Wednesday all the shifts will be assigned. Okay. Wednesday, it's all going to be done. Um, my firewall is going to complain at us while we're standing here, that's fine. Um, and as, as we go in, when you arrive at the festival, the coordinators will have access to this as well, and they'll be able to kind of just mark that you're here and things like that. So that's what they're going to do when you check in. It's part of the check-in process so that we know that you're on site. Um, and then other than that, it's a very simple calendar. Cool. Thank you, Vizzy. Um, so just a, before we come on to, well, actually, let's do questions. Um, have we got any questions about the program so far, as of yet? OK, one second. Oh, I'll do it. OK, where were my questions again? Try not to hit anyone. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just remind me when um, we'll know what shifts we're doing, like what day, yeah, sure. and then also, so is that Wednesday just before the festival, and then also do we get a say over whether or not we're desk or whatever, how are you deciding? Sure, okay, so when you sign up to this system to block out your time, it will start with um, asking you what roles you want to do. So that's the first point, is you'll sign up, it will, you'll choose what roles you're willing to do. Once you've chosen that, you'll block out your time, and then on Wednesday next week, I'll have the shift finalised. Of course, you'll also be asked what days you're available, so we won't schedule for days that you for days that you say you're not available. Um, if you need things scheduled earlier than Wednesday, do give me a shout because I can I can make sure your shifts get done a little bit earlier. But Wednesday, everything will be complete. One other thing that I forgot to mention is when you are assigned shifts, it will show you a little notification dot next to your name so you know which shifts have been assigned to you, uh, and you are asked to confirm every shift that's put against you so that we know that you've A, seen it, and B, that it is available, so that if there is a scheduling conflict that hasn't managed to make it in for any reason, it lets Tom know automatically so that we cannot correct the shifting as needed. Okay, who else has got a question? Could you just uh, go over how to hang out swag bags and stuff? Because last year we had a situation of kids going around with bags full of socks and then they were on eBay. So just so we're not giving out <laughs> too much swag. 
<laughs> and we didn't actually run out of like genuine swag bags for people that didn't get some. Okay, so, so last year, yeah, sure. I completely forgot about swag bags. Um, so last year we didn't do swag bags, and um, we just had a free for all on swag in some senses. Um, this year we're going back to swag bags, um, so that people don't get too much. On Friday, we're going to have a shift on Thursday and Friday, I think. Um, we're going to have some shifts available to put together swag bags. We'll need one for every attendee, and there's 1,000 something. How many people, Mark? 1,600. 1,700. 1,700 swag bags will need to be done. Um, so we need to get all those put together, and then as people check in, they'll, and it will be their first check in, so on their first registration, they'll be given a swag bag. Um, and we'll send out some information about how that's going to work. Is that everything? Yeah, just, just so we don't cool. run out. Last, time, last year we ran out, so. Yeah, we won't run out. Well, Thanks. hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question. Nate. How does a volunteer get notified when their shift is? So if they're running about having fun, going. Give me the microphone, Nate, mate. You can't hear me? Jeez. Um, well, recording, we can't. I apologise. So as a volunteer, how do you know when your shift is? So is there some kind of push notification? So if you're running about having fun, and then you suddenly go, oh dear, I should have been somewhere else, but without realizing. No, um, there isn't. Um, there will be a button to add your, no, I can't hear me, but there will be a button to add your shifts to Google Calendar or iCal. So there could be an iCal download. Okay, that's great. Cool, so you'll be able to add your shift to your calendar, and then you'll be able to set your own notification. Thanks for confirming. You're very welcome. No. No. Okay, have we got more questions? Will there be an app as well? If it's, yes. It's not an app, it will just be a web app. Okay. That's what I was it will be mobile friendly though. <coughs> yeah. Elena. Is the uh, schedule going to be like a web app again? The schedule is guidebook. Um, so what? it's guidebook, guidebook same as yeah. last year. <coughs> How long is a shift? Okay, so shifts for the festival weekend, um, they, they're going to be varying lengths. But essentially we try and make shifts about two hours long, um, or there or thereabouts, depending on what the schedule looks like. So for example, if it ma matches the, sh the session pattern, because the shift will match the sessions and the overall festival program. So some shifts might be an hour and a half, some might be two hours, some might be two and a half hours. So then how, how many shifts per volunteer? We ask for four hours of volunteering typically. Um, so you can, it will depend on what shift you get assigned. Um, of course, because you're not signing up yourself this year, you might end up with less and that's fine. Um, or you might end up with more and sorry. Um, but essentially we'll, we'll try and match everybody to about four hours of volunteering over the weekend. Okay. Uh, is there a party on Saturday? There is a party on Saturday. Um, okay, so information about um, things with food and drinks. Um, so Friday, we'll start with Friday. Friday we have our science fair. Um, that'll be drinks and canapes. Um, and so then Saturday, do we have breakfast this year, Mark? Yes. Okay, so Saturday morning we'll have breakfast. Um, lunchtime Saturday we'll have lunch. Sunday, ev Saturday evening, sorry, we will go back to the, Ro the Royal Society of Arts, so MozFest House, and that will be where our party is, similar to last year, if you came along last year. Um, so RSA, for people that don't know, is just behind Charing Cross Station. So, yeah. Yeah. so for the Saturday party, yeah. two years back we arranged all that cruise and all, so we are not doing this. No, we're not doing, uh, we're not doing a cruise this year. Um, it would be, it was uh, an, an experience, but yeah, not this year. We're going to the RSA. Um, probably most people will go on the tube. <laughs> okay, got a question back there. We want to try and... Just wondering, will there be any food on Saturday evening? Mark, what are the food plans? So otherwise we need to get something in between. This is for the evening. Yeah. Um, we still haven't decided yet, but it will just be some form of food from around the O2. Okay. Oh, no, no. Saturday evening is in. Oh, Saturday evening. Um, 
second I'm party. not too sure. Okay. So for the Saturday night party, there's normally light food of some sort. It won't be it won't be a full meal. It will be light bites um, on the Saturday night. On the Sunday night, there won't be food provided as a festival as a whole. But if you're volunteering with us on Sunday evening for shutdown, we will provide food. We'll buy something. We haven't decided what yet. And of course, if you're volunteering Saturday night for the party or something, we'll look after you. Nate. Nate. Um, on Saturday night, will the party be uh, using tickets again? Yes, so we'll be using drink tokens again. Um, we've got scheduled support for similar to last year. Um, so rather than last year where me and you <laughs> um, supported it, we'll we have a scheduled door. We defended the door. We'll have a, we've got a scheduled role for that this year. Okay. <laughs> um, the guidebook mobile app doesn't work for my account right now. Do you have a backup with the information over there, or just, just I'll, I'll just carry my laptop and look there? I don't know how well the web app works, but if your guidebook doesn't, the web app apparently works really well, according to David. Yeah, I tried um, it, and it's open. It's just the mobile app. Always up to date. Always, <laughs> it's always up to date. The app needs to be pushed to an update, whereas the web app is like, if we, if we change a session, we should be doing this year. Yeah. yeah, the um, the mobile app actually needs to be pushed to be updated, but the web app, uh, if you don't have the link already, you'll be supplied with the link. The, the web app will always be up to date. So if we, as Wranglers, actually change the schedule, that will be reflected on the web app immediately. Cool. Have we got a question? Any questions? Any more questions? Okay, I think that's the end of the questions then. Um, if you've got more questions, we are going to be around for a little while, so help yourself to drinks and snacks and things like that. Um, and come and find us if you've got any questions. Equally, you've got my contact details if you need to get hold of us for any other questions. So it's mozfestvols at mozillafoundation.org. And so do send us an email if you've got any questions beyond here. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for coming. It's really great having so many here and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Um, for now, please do help yourselves drink, snacks and we'll uh, come and socialise with you. Switched off. Um,